YouTube Oz Zico in the Goat House is back, grading every single first round pick from the 2024 NFL draft. We have content covering the draft on the channel. More to come. We're ready for day two and three. Very important to follow us on Twitter for pick by pick analysis. While something to keep in mind while I'm grading these is I'm grading the team value of the pick not grading the player and how I think he'll play. I think most people understand that. But first pick was Caleb Williams to the Bears. I'm giving the Bears an A- minus for that one. Uh, overall, they get their quarterback in the future. They get an elite prospect. Maybe there's some attitude concerns with Caleb Williams. I was a huge Drake May guy, but the Bears really don't have time to sit and try to develop a guy. Caleb Williams is going to be better um, you know, right now. So the Bears get an A- minus for the first overall pick. Second overall pick, Jaden Daniels goes to the Commanders. I'm going to give the Commanders a B-. minus. I almost gave him a C plus. I, again, I was a huge Drake May guy. I really wanted the Commanders to take Drake May. I actually thought that was a better fit, and I think he really could have thrived there. I think he could have hit his potential a lot sooner, and I think very highly of his potential. Um, I think the Commanders went for more of a win now because of who their coaching staff is. Um, but when I watch these guys, Daniels in May, I, I May... Just seems like the much better NFL prospect. Like I, and Jaden Daniels is good, but there's a difference between who's better in college, who's better in NFL. Reminds me a lot of the C.J. Stroud versus Bryce Young debate. Young was a little flashier in college, but there was no doubt in my mind that Stroud, um, you know, was better than Bryce Young as an NFL prospect. Um, so it reminds me a little bit of that. Like if they would have got Drake May, it would have been an A or A plus. Uh, but Jaden Daniels is good. I'm about to give it a C plus because I really preferred May over Daniels as an NFL. Uh, potential but still get a pretty good player i the commanders could be sneaky this year i give them a b minus and there it is drake may was my favorite player in the draft because i think his upside is through the roof i think he could be a special special player um he will struggle early on because you know he plays a little hero ball he throws the ball up for grabs but um i think you can have a path i'm not saying he's gonna be josh allen but i think you can have a path like that uh maybe in terms of comparison maybe a little more comparable to a trevor lawrence Justin Herbert, some say. Um, I hope the Patriots continue to build around him a little bit better. They have the whole draft still to do that. I'm excited. I'm very excited for the Patriots. I feel feels like how I felt with the Texans with C.J. Stroud, and the Texans were a little more advanced in their roster at this point. But um, my top player in the draft, because I think he had the best upside, I give it an A-plus for the New England Patriots. Good job not trading back. Uh, and just taking Drake May. Marvin Harrison Jr. goes the fourth pick. This is the right pick. You know, the right pick, the number one receiver in the class. Don't trade back. Don't risk it. Get the, get one of those elite receivers, but get the guy. You know, get my voice just went really high there. Get, get the guy. They got the guy, Marvin Harrison Jr. You know, A-pluses are like the wild picks to me, like steal. Oh, my God. Like So it's hard to say that for this, but it's great. You get a great elite prospect, uh, my number one receiver in the class. Uh, Joe Alt to the Chargers. I love Joe Alt. My number one tackle, elite prospect, high upside. The Chargers offense line is now complete. So all those things sound like a really good grade. And we did give it a good grade and a B. Um, it was like B, B minus. But for them, uh, you know, I thought the receivers available were a little better than, and they were clearly better, but a little better than Joe Alt. Um, in terms of my board, but I thought everyone's board and I thought it was, I'm not a big draft off need guy, but if your need, your by far, your biggest need is also the best player available, whether it's neighbors or a Dunze, I would have leaned that for Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert can definitely manage with the rest of the offensive line. The offensive line, I think was fine. I think the coaching would have made it a lot better too. Um, so there, there are some knocks on this, but at the end of the day, you got a freaky tackle with a lot of upside and your offensive line is complete. They'll have to focus on receiver, uh, in the next round. Could Harbaugh target one of his guys or, or you know, someone like that, but we'll see. I gave them a B for the fifth overall pick, sixth overall pick Malik neighbors, to the giants. Yeah. A minus a range right in there. Um, I, I was equally fine for the most part around this range with Neighbors or a Dunze. I, I think you can make the case a Dunze would have made a tiny bit more. So you can argue either side. Neighbors a little easier to use because you put him inside, outside. They do have Wandale Robinson for the inside who I like if he's healthy. A Dunze is that guy they kind of been missing. And there are some questions about like how will Neighbors be with their quarterback play. A Dunze seems to be he's good to go with, with that with whatever. But Neighbors, you can again, you can argue that I mean, he's, he's a special player, elite prospect. You can't really argue that. That's like facts. Special player, elite prospect, going to be really good. But you can argue that which one's an easier target for 
a struggling quarterback, I think neighbors it, it could actually make the quarterback. It, you can again, you can argue that because you can scheme things up for neighbors, but you can just throw it up for grabs for a Dunze. Uh, a A minus. It's pretty equal for me. Uh, obviously, wasn't a wild pick. I actually thought they were going to go a Dunze over neighbors, but overall, Giants get better. Uh, Titans go J.C. Latham. I gave it a B plus. Now I'm assuming most of the Titan fan base don't like this because just based off my comment section all offseason, whenever I mentioned J.C. Latham, the Titans, I got destroyed. Like it was no way, terrible pick, no chance it's happening. So we'll go ahead and assume most, not all, we can't speak for all. Most of the Titans fans don't really like this, but I like J.C. Latham. I watched the tackle tape early and I instantly said there is no doubt in my mind the best two tackles are Joe Alt and then J.C. Latham. No question in my mind based on what I've watched. Um, so I liked Latham. I thought he would go around this range. Alt was off the board. I also like Latham as a fit. Uh, people are a little worried about the quickness, I guess, of Latham. I think he's plenty quick enough uh, for how big and strong he is. Like He's not allowing anybody to shed blocks. Do I love that? But... Talk about the scheme fit again. Like you don't, you don't. Latham's not coming in here to play outside zone. You're really not worried about how speedy he is. Uh, the Titans staff, they're going to want to run a lot of gap in inside zone. So it perfectly fits Latham. It really brings out his strengths and hides the weaknesses. I don't think there's too many weaknesses. Um, I, I think it's a really good fit. You know, Callahan said it was his favorite favorite player in the draft. So um, I think it's pretty solid. It's not like a super sexy pick. Maybe a better scenario. What were, I think the better scenarios were off the board. Maybe they wanted. Maybe you wanted a Dunze, a little flashier. But I, overall, I thought it was a pretty good pick. J.C. Latham, the Titans, and not a lot of people were high on him. I think because he's an Alabama tackle, that's a bad way to scout. It's a very bad way to scout. Just because what happened with the last couple Alabama tackles, uh, I did not like Leatherwood. Very low on him, and I had him as a guard. Jonah Williams, I had as a guard as well, and he's been decent. Evan Neal, I'm surprised hasn't worked out yet. But Latham, I just liked way better than all those guys. So, um, Shocker of uh, the first round was Michael Penix Jr. going to the Falcons. And tough one here because, I mean, he could have went to a couple different, a few different teams around this range, and I would have graded better. Like, not great, but better. Um, it would have been a reach, so it wouldn't have been a great grade. but uh, And it was a reach here, but... And I do like Michael Penix Jr. He's a winner. He's got arm talent. The guy has got great arm talent. Yes, he had good weapons, but he still made the throws. I mean, the velocity behind the ball, it's great. But it is a little early considering that system he comes from. It's a hell of a transition. Um, he's a little up there in age. I'm not too worried about that. Well, I wouldn't be too worried about that. We'll get into it, though. Uh, but the injury concern as well. They made it this this just a little too early. Uh, I liked him better than Bo Nix. We'll talk about the Bo Nix pick. But little different situations. The Falcons valued quarterback at an insane level, and it's the most important position. But you paid Kirk, Kirk Cousins that much money, and then you draft Michael Penix. You have a chance to make your team that much better with getting an eighth overall pick worthy guy. I really love Dallas Turner for them. I'm surprised they didn't take him. Um, you know, so. But the biggest thing, the biggest thing here is what I can't get over is what are the Falcons' hopes? What are they hoping for the most? I'd say that that massive Kirk Cousins, like the, the biggest splash move of free agency, that contract works out. And if that works out, that would mean we don't see Michael Penix Jr. for a long time, and he's going to be a little older for, and it's not that big of a deal, but a little old on the older side for his ver very first start. So they're almost hoping that this doesn't really show to work out anytime soon. And if they're hoping Michael Penix is a great pick at eight, because when it's the eighth pick, it should be a great pick. It should turn out a great pick. Then that would mean the Kirk Cousins thing probably didn't work out. So I don't know if contradicting is the right word. I think it is. Um, so it's a little odd. The reason it's not an F, what it sounds like it would be an F, is because, I mean, I, I do think you get a talented quarterback, and it's a great situation to learn behind Kirk Cousins. I mean, if you had to hand pick some, uh, you know, just a, a, on one hand, count on one hand the guys to learn behind, I think Kirk Cousins would probably be on there, to be honest. Playing in different systems, being the professional that he is, how he's a smart quarterback, consistent quarterback. So, uh, and maybe he has his strengths or what Michael Penix's weaknesses are. So it is a good situation, and they, they maybe are going for like a Jordan Love, Aaron Rodgers type situation. Um, I just wish he was healthier. I wish he was a little younger. Um, and I mainly just wish they, and they're, maybe they're worried about how they're going to get penalized for the tampering thing, but I, I don't know if you can really think like that. Um, but 
in, uh, again, not grading a player. He could end up like once he takes over for Kirk Cousins, I expect him to be good. I he better be good. I expect him to be good, but just how they went about it, just the, the, again the fact that what were they hoping for? They're hoping for kind of one to not. I don't know whether the signing or the pick. So it's an interesting one. Um, I would have got ripped if I mocked that. A lot of these. I got ripped for mocking Latham, the Titans. So people got to stop complaining about mock drafts here. The Bears get an A-plus for Rome Adunze at number nine. We knew this was possible, but, man, this was a dream scenario for the Chicago Bears. It was like trade back unless one of those receivers. Nothing else. Who, who cares about the you know, obviously the other quarterbacks, the offense line, I don't think they were going to take a tackle here. Uh, trade back unless one of the elite receivers are there and one of the elite receivers are here at Roma Dunze. Uh, and Keenan Allen's not going to last forever, so you had to make sure you got another big-time receiver for this high-powered passing offense led by Caleb Williams. So um, one of my favorite players in the draft just because his attitude, his, his style of play, when the game is on the line, you go to Roma Dunze and he wins. So give it, the Bears an A-plus for that one. The Bears probably got – Probably improved more than anybody um, with their two picks uh, to, uh, last night. Vikings got J.J. McCarthy at 10th overall. They did trade up one spot. Not a huge trade up one spot guy. It's just something I don't believe in if I'm a GM, but you know, I'm not going to completely destroy a team for it. I, the Giants did it last year with Deontay Banks. I still gave them an A because I like the player, the fit, the pick. Uh, but yeah, McCarthy was the Vikings guy uh, you know, after Drake May, which they couldn't go up to three. Uh, and they get their guy after Michael Penix, actually, and they get him down at 10, um, and they don't have to give up uh, this year first or next year first, Not nothing close. So overall, that's pretty solid. Um, it would probably be an A- minus or an A, but they did trade up a spot and get, give up some value. Uh, but it, yeah, obviously a, a guy with a lot of upside, a really solid fit. I think people got it wrong with McCarthy, even myself. You know, at, at the end of the – I think everybody at the end of the season – a lot of people still now saying he's kind of glorified game manager. And I guess he could be that, but I don't think he's that after watching him more. Like to me, he's a boomer bust guy because you know, I think people want to say that he's a glorified game manager. Cause I guess that's what Michigan asked him to do because they dominated on the ground, but that doesn't mean that's the style of player he is. And that doesn't mean that's the style of player. If he will be in the NFL, I think he's kind of a hit or miss guy. Like he's got a rocket arm. He escapes pressure. He can run when he needs to, uh, but he misses some random throws that he should make. So, I think it's like it's a hit or miss guy, like it's a boom, boom or bust type guy, actually. Um, but a very good situation for McCarthy to step into. Kevin O'Connell, Justin Jefferson, TJ Hawkinson, Jordan Addison, Aaron Jones, uh, really good tackle duo. So uh, that should be fun to watch. We'll see who starts day one. But I give the Vikings a B plus for that one. They get their guy. Uh, the Jets, I do like that the Jets basically got free picks. They move back a spot, they get free picks. So I love that part. I just wasn't a big Alu Fashionu guy. If you watched me this whole offseason, you knew that. I do think it's a really good situation. I probably would have graded it lower, but but they trade back. They get a couple free picks, and I, I think it's a pretty good situation for him um, learning behind Tyrone Smith. He doesn't have to start right away because I think he's pretty raw, actually. I don't like his movement skills. I think he's a clunky, slow mover, and nobody really says that. So, I mean, if, if you're a Jets fan um, and you want to be optimistic, go watch. I, I mean, I'm not watching anybody else's grades. So I'm, I'm, maybe there's some people like me here, but most people are going to like this and be optimistic. And I do think it's a really good situation for him to sit and learn. He can end up being good. I just, and I do think he was a first round player. I, just thought, the, I thought this was a lot, uh, you know, earlier than he should have went. And there were way better tackles for me. And there were tackles that were, to me, were much better at tackle, but also could play guard if a guy like Elijah Vera Tucker goes down. So, um, I think they would have taken Latham if he was there. I think they would have taken Roma Dunze if he was there. They trade back and they're like, okay, we can get this guy here. Kind of a little bit of a project, but. Um, and the Jets have haven't it's haven't hasn't been working out with the offensive lineman they've picked recently, um, and hearing you know heard some bad things about their offensive line coach, but I guess they don't really have anything to do with it uh, the grade here. But um, yeah, I mean at least it's a, a somewhat of a good fit behind Tyrone Smith, and they get some extra picks. But I think a little bit of a project. I I think kind of got to refine his technique a little bit. That's my take. It's not really a common take. So. Uh, and another D minus were given out. The Broncos reach big time for Bo Nix. And, and I liked Michael Penix Jr. a lot more than Bo Nix, but the situation, you know, the Falcons didn't really need Penix at all. Uh, the Broncos kind of needed a quarterback. And that's, it's such a big reach. And I'm remembering Bo Nix at Auburn when he played better competition, but he did get better at Oregon. But 
man, the more and more I watched, I watched him, I watched Troy Franklin. I'm like, man, like Knicks is definitely not near a first round pick. Like he's just definitely not a first round pick. Misses some layup throws. He's pro ready in the way where he he's smart. He would come in and do the job. He'll listen. He'll do his job. Um, he'll take the freebies for the most part. Um, he could be a game manager, um, you know, but the reason it's not an F is because the Broncos badly, badly, badly needed a quarterback, a starting quarterback, and I guess Bo Nix can come in and do that right away. I don't know what what level, um, and the quarterbacks were flying off the board, but felt like the Broncos, felt like Sean Payton, I shouldn't say the Broncos, Sean Payton was like, all right, quarterbacks come off the board, I'm a little scared, I'm desperate, here's a guy that kind of looks, plays like, people will say he looks and kind of... Uh, he doesn't really have that similar place to Drew Brees. I would say more so a better, uh, maybe a much better version of an Ian Book who Sean Payton drafted with New Orleans, and that was a questionable pick, but a lot later. I do think Knicks is a lot better. but um, So it's pretty questionable. The only reason it's not an F is because they were obviously desperate for a quarterback. It was a, the biggest need here. Um, but, man, I, you know, it's just the Broncos will continue to kind of struggle with the, you know what, what they had to struggle with at the quarterback position what, what they've been going through uh 13th pick a little bit of a surprise never saw Brock Bowers mock to the Raiders I'll give it a B plus I did I did think he was an elite tight end prospect uh, maybe just too good to pass for the Raiders um you know how much are they going to use him and Michael Mayer but I mean they're going to use Bowers a ton and they're going to use him more than Mayer but how will that work will they use both you know, it's interesting and then they kind of and I respect it they kind of look at their board and they go it's not our biggest need, but he's a little, he's a lot higher grade as the guys that we do have at needs here. But so I do respect that. Um, you know, overall, you get, you get a, a guy that grinds out first downs. You get a ball player at the tight end position. So I give the Raiders a B plus. Uh, for the Saints, I give Taliese Fuaga for the, the pick for the Saints an A. Uh, thought about A minus because it's not maybe not the sexiest pick in the world, I suppose, and we kind of expected it, but. This this was their fit. This was their ultimate fit. A guy that can plug him, you can plug him in at right tackle while Ramchek's injured. Um, re- really good scheme fit as well. He's fun to watch. Kind of can make a highlight tape out of, out of his hit some of his blocks, especially a downfield on the cutoff blocks. This was kind of their dream, and we knew it was possible, but we thought it was possible he can go 13th or he can go up to the Jets. Um, you know, and I much preferred Fuaga over Fashionu, and Fashionu was off the board. I still like to think they would have taken Fuaga if they had the choice between two. Um, so overall, this was like almost a dream scenario for the Saints. It's not like a wow A plus pick, but I give it an A. Uh, Leatu Latu for the Colts is an interesting pick. I mean, you do have a really good pass, polished pass rusher, a lot of finesse to his game, impact, and I did think they needed a pass rusher, even though I felt like a lot of Colts fans disagreed. Like they were insisting on developing the younger guys they had, but um, they just needed to get better. And I, I think day one, actually, if healthy, lot two is their best pass rusher. Um, so that's good. They upgraded somewhere they needed to upgrade. I think he was, talent-wise, with, was worthy of a pick around this range. There is a ton of risk, a ton of risk, because he did medically retire. He was good to go the last two years, but one you know, one bad hit, one injury is like a Leighton Vander situation. Then you got he's not the same player or or he has to retire early. So um, I'm optimistic that he could continue to off the re- continue where he left off at UCLA. We kept it in the B range because he's a good player. I kind of respect it. They actually went and got better at the position. They weren't relying on development. Um, apparently, they didn't give him a physical. Most teams did. And then Schefter came on and said what we kind of already knew, that several teams – actually completely took him off their board because the medicals and they checked him out and the Colts didn't check him out. So it's a little scary. It is a little scary here. So if you didn't have the medicals, I mean, this would have been a, a much better grade, but I still keep it in the B range, which I consider good, but just a ton of risk with this one. It felt like the way the clock was rolling, they kind of wanted to trade back because they felt like they could still get him too. So um, give the Colts a B minus. Uh, Byron Murphy was my top defensive player in the class. I thought he was going to go earlier in this. Uh, Seahawks, I give an A+. Uh, you know, my number nine overall player, top defensive player. You get him at 16, of course you're going to get an A+. Plus here. And when you get the best defense, or debatable, but I didn't, I think who it was debatable between was a guy that we're going to talk about. So that's how crazy it was with defense. Um, but, man, love the fit. Mike McDonald's defense, all about that interior defense line. You pair him in there with the interior defense lineman and the guys off the edge they have. That's a physical front, and, and they're going to be good up there. So, um, 
I think it's a steal based off my board, based off my thoughts on Byron Murphy. I was a big Byron Murphy guy from the start. Um, so excited for him and the Seahawks. Give him an A+. Plus. And there's the other top defensive player in the draft. How does a, the best edge rusher in a class drop this far? I mean, the, the team's desperate for quarterback, team desperate for offense in general, and offense a top-heavy class. That will create it. The Vikings do trade up a little bit, but in no way did we think this was a possibility for the Vikings to you know, get McCarthy, keep their 23rd pick, and make a move for Dallas Turner. Um, really good fit scheme-wise for Flores' defense. Uh, but also because, you know, he can drop in coverage a ton. Um, ton of upside. Heard people say he's a better prospect than Will Anderson. I, I don't agree with that, but you understand, like, kind of the upside here. Um, this just really wasn't supposed to happen. So they, they signed Jonathan Grenard to a big deal, and they add Andrew Van Ginkle. I think Turner, I think it's realistic that he could be their best pass rusher, even as a raw upside guy year one. So uh, that's one I get excited about for the Vikings here. Did not think they had a plan with that 23, why they wanted to keep it. So um, fortunate that Turner slipped a little bit. Honestly surprised the Jags didn't take him here. Bengals taking Amarius Mims. I give it a C plus. I love the upside with the kid. He has the traits, uh, freaky traits, pretty decent with the limited experience. So that that's a good start too. Um, I think it's a good fit because where I didn't like Mims was out in space and with his timing, but the Bengals run a lot of gap inside zone. So you kind of limit the space and the, not so much the timing with the space, uh, like downfield blocks. So it is a good fit. Like if an outside zone team took him, I'd have been like, what, you know? So, uh, good fit, pretty decent situation for him to learn behind Trent Brown at right tackle and maybe sit right away. My issue was, yeah, I was starting to drop him down my board a little bit because he was injured during the year, which resulted in a limited experience. He got injured at the combine, and he does, you know, again, in space, timing flaws, um, just really raw, needs more reps, and he probably sits behind Trent Brown at first. And the Bengals' offensive line development and, and picks, I guess, haven't fully worked out. And it's a guy that really needs coaching and really needs reps and really needs to figure it out and stay healthy. So. There are big positives. Again, scheme fit, decent situation, like learning behind Trent Brown and Orlando Brown Jr. But then uh, with the Bengals, like how, you know, a lot needs to go right for this to work out at the same time. But C-plus isn't the worst thing. Again, high, high upside. There's positives and negatives here. Uh, I know for the most part, based on the comments, I don't know if the, the Bengals fans were thrilled about this one. I preferred Guyton. Guyton and Mims were fits in the same player I thought this is really the same player, like the similar strengths and weaknesses, all traits, limited experience, high upside. The difference, I thought Guyton uh, was a, definitely better in space with his timing and his timing blocks, cutoff blocks as well, downfield blocks, and less durability, you know, more durability concerns with Mims. So I actually kind of felt they were going to go, well, Fatanu was still here, but, or, uh, or Guyton, um, so, okay, pick there for them. And then a C-plus again. I was surprised about this one. I wasn't as high on versus everyone else. I do think he's a really good pass rusher. He's physical. Uh, it's too bad he doesn't get to play you know, outside of Aaron Donald. Um, you know, but uh, polished run defender from the edge, so maybe they like that from him. And he'll get production, you know, off the edge. A little tight, lacking the flexibility. I thought he was strictly a 4-3 end, so I'm curious to see how the Rams use him here. They're going to have him stand up off the edge, but... Um, yeah, it's not a super sexy of a pick for me. Um, I'm just a little surprised about the scheme fit, but I, I, again, I think he'll be pro- I think he'll be productive for them, and, and I think they'll make it work there. Uh, but I gave it a C plus. Uh, question the fit a little bit. Uh, Troy Fatanu for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I thought this was the very latest you go. So it wasn't like wow, how did they steal him? Because I did think there was a some boss. I really thought the Rams were going to take him. It just seemed like a Rams left tackle. Not necessarily they needed a left tackle that bad, but. Um, but this is kind of the latest he would go, uh, but perfect for the Steelers kind of felt right in their lap. He's going to fit at left tackle for them. Um, I thought it was, yeah, I got a really good fit. It's pretty close to being an a plus. It just wasn't like jump out of my seat. Like how in the hell, it, you know, did they do that? So, but it's pretty damn close to being an a plus. Um, and the Steelers did great last year too. So we'll see if they continue this rolling. Um, so great pick, great fit, great fit. Uh, chop Robinson, to the Dolphins this is an interesting one because I love Chop Robinson. I loved him. I was one of his biggest fans here for this draft. A lot of people were not high on him. Um, loved the explosive get off. He was more of an impact than the stats. The sack stats will show. He's a disruptor. Uh, I think he's going to be good. Uh, 
what's the situation here? Uh, is he going to play right away because of injury? And then is he going to kind of get benched because those guys are ready to go? Are those guys going to be ready to go right here? Jalen Phillips, I'm going to talk about uh, right away. Um, they have a long list of pass rushers. So I just kind of wish he went to a team where he actually can play and like, stick in, you know, stay there. But um, so it's interesting, but really talented player. Dolphins got an explosive guy with a ton of upside. Um, you know, does this say they really worry about their durability? So that's really not a good look. Has nothing to do with the pick, but with Chop Robinson himself. But yeah, I'm curious to see how many snaps he gets this year. But overall, I was a big Chop Robinson fan. Was not expecting the Dolphins to take him, but there you go. Uh, Quinion Mitchell, this is borderline A, A plus. Ah, he was very close to A plus because he wasn't really supposed to be here. Terry and Arnold wasn't supposed to be here. A lot of the defensive players all dropped. So it kind of got all pushed back. Uh, and they get some really good value here with Mitchell. Uh, a playmaking zone corner that can come in and help them right away, even though they have some big name corners that didn't play too well last year. But my only knock on him was he only pressed 20 times this year, and that's a big thing for the NFL and usually for Fangio. Uh, we run, run a lot of want to run a lot of press zones, so he could struggle early on in that. It's it's okay, give him some time to learn. But he is a really good playmaker in zone off coverage. Um, so we'll see. Um, almost gave an A plus. Defensive players started to drop. I don't, I I liked Arnold better. Not a ton better. And especially for the Eagles, his ability to play press, uh, man, zone. I thought he's a little more versatile. I felt like that was more of a Roseman guy, but I guess I was wrong there. Uh, really good steal pick for the Philadelphia Eagles here. Borderline an A+. Uh, then Brian Thomas Jr., I gave it an A+. Plus here. I, I, I do wonder because it feels like he's a faster Gabe Davis, like the same role. So they're kind of moving his role a little bit, like the Calvin Ridley spot, um, which – so it's a, maybe a little bit of a learning curve for Brian Thomas Jr. He has to develop way more of a route tree because that was kind of his knock. He was an outside boundary guy, but, man, he burned people. He is a great contested catcher. guy with that size, contested catchability, and speed is rare, rare. And if those three receivers or, like, two of the three receivers at the top didn't exist, he would have went a lot earlier – um, what factored into the A plus was they traded back, got picks and still got a, a big time receiver here who was higher than 23 on my board. So probably would have been an A, but because they got extra picks, I gave an A plus. I'm all about the value here. So they get really good value. 24, another A plus. If you watch my winners and losers video yesterday or late last night or early this morning, uh, this was my, I thought the lions won the day. This was my favorite pick. Darian Arnold was my top corner in the class the whole way since the start. Um, the only knock, like it's hard to find negatives in Arnold. The only knock was before like the second half of this year, he was elite. Before that, like, okay, he was a first-round player. And then before that, before this year, it was like nowhere near the first round, really. So he only has a little less than a year playing at that level. And probably why he didn't go at the top. But, man, he improved. He can play man. He can play zone. He can press. He can play off. He can play inside, play outside. I like him on the outside for, for the Lions. Um, the mechanics are there. The stickiness and coverage. The Lions got a steal. They got incredible value. They stopped the Packers from getting them. They got their biggest need. How often is the biggest need also the biggest value steal pick? It's actually not that often. Boom, the Lions do it. Brad Holmes does it once again. It gets me hyped. I'm a Vikings fan, and it gets me hyped for like when teams make picks like this. Um, a plus all day, best pick of day one, and there's some really good ones out there as well. NFC North killed it. Uh, here's the Packers. Maybe I wouldn't say killed it for the Packers, but this one's growing on me. I was a little disappointed they took a tackle, even though I did like Jordan Morgan around this range as a tackle. But I like their young duo at tackle. But there's a lot of butts here. Uh, but nothing's really set in stone with how those tackles would be. So Morgan could be an upgrade at left tackle, sure. Also, but there's some talk about Morgan playing guard. And I said the Packers that think he, I read that they think he can play any position. You do factor in who they go to. The Packers, no offensive line. They develop offense line pretty quickly, too. So what they did last year, it's like, man, that offense line down the stretch was ridiculous. I thought it was more so. I thought it was elite run blocking. I thought it was very impressive pass blocking. Morgan's a pass blocker first, so it kind of upgrades that. I do worry about if he has to play guard. I, I do, I'm do. i not really as worried because the Packers are great with that, but his weakness is they, that's why he was a little tricky. Like He's a tackle. He's a tackle. But he's lacking the length for tackle. But 
Is he a guard? His weakness is he's not super strong. So is he strong enough to block the interior? His play style is just straight tackle. But So it's a little tricky here, but it's growing on me a little bit. It could be an upgrade at left tackle. It could be an upgrade at, you know, at the guard spot they have open. Um, there are actually some thought that he possibly could play center if they ever need him to. Um, Packers know what they're doing here, so I bumped it up. It was a little surprising to pick. I know the Packers fans didn't want tackle. Um, it's kind of growing on me, maybe growing on you a little bit. So we'll give it a B minus there. Packers, I mean, that division's going to be good, but Packers Lions battle is going to be fun. Um, yeah. Uh, Graham Barton going to the Bucks. Yeah, not a super appealing pick, but as a guy that could have went a little earlier, they get their center. I think he could play center, guard, or tackle. I don't really see him ever playing tackle for them unless somebody goes down. Um, yeah, I guess it always bring, it brings up the debate how early you take a center, but. I think you get a pretty good one here. You get pretty pretty good value because you thought he could have been a little earlier. So felt like a firm A minus here for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Twenty seven, Darius Robinson for the Cardinals. Uh, maybe not super appealing because he is lacking that speed. He's lacking that closing speed. It showed at the combine, but it shows on tape when tracking down the quarterback. But this guy's good. Like the other things say, way better than twenty seventh pick. Like the power, the length, knowing how to use it, the versatility. He has limited reps off the edge, and he's just getting better at that. He does get after the quarterback. If he had speed, he would have been t- I think he'd have been the first defensive player taken, actually. Um, I think you get a pretty good player. This was his range. I think you get a pretty good player. I like the fit for Jonathan Gannon's defense. I think it helps him run more of his defense this year. I think opposite of B.J. Ajilari, I think they complement each other. They're way different, and I, I like that. I like that. Uh, and you can you know play Darius Robinson inside a little bit. Over the tackle, three techniques. So I think it's a good piece uh, for Gannon's defense. Um, I, I overall, I, I like it for the most part, B plus 28 Xavier worthy, uh, any other team, you know, training up to get them. Uh, it's probably not as good of a grade and that's maybe people will think that's not fair, but this is how it goes, you know, fit in the team that gets them. You know, this guy's going to be damn good for the chiefs. Like I'm second, the chiefs took him. I'm like, damn, I wish I had him a little higher on my board. That's just how it goes. You know? So it's a great fit. He's going to be dominant for the chiefs. I'm sure. Uh, in terms of value of the pick, they traded up. You know, it wasn't a, it wasn't a steal, so it, we give it a B plus here. But for any other team, it might have been like a B minus. So um, it's the Chiefs for you. Twenty nine. I love this for the Cowboys. Factor in they traded back, they traded down. They badly needed more picks because they needed to fill more roster spots. They get a day two pick out of it. If, again, I said in the other, the firm handshakes for the Lions and the Cowboys on this deal. It helped them tremendously, the both of them. Um, I I. Gr- Guyton was growing on me. I, I love the upside, but he's already good. Like how good he is for limited experience and the freakish upside that he has because of his traits. I think it's pretty damn good. I really felt like his floor was the Cowboys at 24. I thought it was an incredible pick. I thought a great scenario was if he dropped the Cowboys 24. He did. They trade back at that value needed pick and they still get him. And the Cowboys no offensive line. I think it's a plug and play fit there. And he's a freakish upside guy. I love this. Again, factoring in they trade the balls on Jerry Jones trade. A little different than last year. I did not grade Mozzie Smith high at all. I did not like that pick. Um, so a little bit different. It's kind of it feels all over the place with the Cowboys. Like I, you know, Leighton Van Der Esch, I didn't love that pick. I didn't grade it high. Uh Micah Parsons, I freaking loved it. A plus. Uh and, and then Mozzie Smith, I did not like it. And now Tyler Guyton, I, I you know, is he a his level of a player is Micah Parsons C D Lamb? No. But perfect fit. I'm confident he's gonna work out. Love the upside. They trade back and still, you know, so it's all about value here. So I, I love what the Cowboys did with the with the, um, their first round moves here. Uh, next, Nate Wiggins just feels like a B. It's a solid playmaking corner. Uh, a lot of upside because of his playmaking ability and, and his freakish speed. Um, this was more of his range. Some people were higher on him. My concern is, and it kind of goes with the rave, the negative thing of the Ravens, is durability. Um, he is thin. And that, just because you're thin doesn't mean you have durability issues. But he's had, he had multiple issues while at Clemson. Nothing super major, but two injuries while being thin and had an injury at the combine. So those things don't pair well together, especially with the Ravens, their past durability issues. So uh, that's the tricky part. That's the tricky part. But you get a good corner here. Um, you know, so I feel right there, you know, at, at a B. I, I really think they wanted one of those offensive tackles, uh, and they all came off the board here. Guyton they would have loved. Mims they would have loved. Um 
you know, so that was a little tough, but I give, give the Ravens a B. Uh, I'm actually going to give Ricky, I'm going to give the Niners for drafting Ricky Pearsall a B minus. I think most people probably give it a, I don't know what they're going to give it actually. I can't speak for everyone else, but lesser of a grade. And people, I'm just saying that because I thought maybe fans were kind of making fun of the pick a little bit, but because he's a firm second rounder, firm second rounder, I agree with that, but I mean, we're at pick 31 here. We're at pick 31. We penalize the team that much for taking a sec- second rounder at 31. You get the fifth year option. You know, not too much, but this one's growing on me too. It's something the Niners under Kyle Shanahan have not had. They don't have Ricky Pearsall. Do they have better receivers? Yes. They, had, they have some great receivers, and who knows if they're going to trade them or not, but they do not have, they did not have a true slot receiver. And this is a true slot receiver, Adam Thielen like. Not because he's white. Watch him play, watch him move, his style of play. I saw, what was it, some draft cover saying Michael Gallup. I could not disagree more with that. Oh, my God. I could not disagree more. Um, Adam Thielen is what he is. This guy is a smooth operator from the slot. He's got great hands. He's going to make people miss in coverage. Um, Likeable kid. The Niners don't have that. Brandon Ayuk, majority of snaps outside. Debo Samuel, majority of his snaps outside. Used way differently than Brandon Ayuk. They have not had a guy that like, goes to work like consistently from the slot. I know they can line Kittle up there to tight end. I know they line up Jennings out you know, there. It's more of like when he lines up there, it almost feels like a move tight end, and he's pretty sneaky good. But you get a true shifty slot receiver. So the Niners, who are always good, and they can't get over the hump, they add something a little unique that people aren't ready, that they don't really have. Um, so that's why it's growing on me. It's a little early. It's not super flashy. If Ayuk and Debo are still there, how much are they going to use them? If they have to trade one, it's like, well, they just took him because they had to trade one. So maybe those things aren't the most appealing thing. But the uniqueness here, it kind of reminds me last year. Like the Bills took Dalton Kincaid. Um, wasn't the most appealing pick right away. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought about it, it's like, okay, how they're going to use them. It's going to be unique. It's going to be flashy. So I think it's a little similar here, even though it's a different position. Uh, and then 32, the Panthers go up one spot, which again, I'm not usually like the Vikings. I'm not usually a huge fan of, but you go up one spot and you get a fifth year option here. So you kind of can make a little bit of an exception. Again, if I'm a GM, I don't do it, but that doesn't mean I have to hate when teams do it. I, you can make an argument here for it fifth year option and you get the guy that you liked it was so obvious the Panthers liked like it I kept mocking the, uh, him them to them 33 um and I I thought he was a very early second round player it's the same thing it's the same thing you get the fifth year option you're at 32 um would you like it a little bit better if they stay put it was only a swap of picks and the value was okay there um but yeah you get you get a receiver they kind of don't have like Thielen's a slot receiver Deontay Johnson is a good mixture um, I think he plays better from the slot, but where he does his damage is in the middle of the field, like medium, you know, intermediate routes. Leggett is an outside contested catch guy, but a gadget guy, kind of both those, uh, really good for Bryce Young, kind of simplified things. So something they don't really have, um, Mingo could be a gadget guy, but he's kind of a, another slot gadget guy, um, you know, unique type player. So it's something they just really don't, didn't have here. So, uh, overall I give it a B. You do trade up one spot, um, not super, super appealing, but they got their guy here, and it's going to be fun. Bryce Young's got some weapons. Uh, I think the biggest weapon, actually, is their new head coach, Dave Canales, for Bryce Young, but we'll see. I, I just love that hire. So uh, there you have it. Grades for all 32 first-round picks. It's based off of the team and the value of the pick. It's not predicting how the player will perform in year one. Um, but yeah, if you missed our last video, check it out. Winners and losers. We're going to have a day two mock coming out a lot coming out. Follow us on Twitter for pick by pick analysis for day two and three turn notifications on. That's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.